Hey everybody, I'm Kate Conroy. And I'm Vinny Civitello. And this is Other People's Business, which is the podcast from the New Jersey Business and Industry Association, which is the largest business association in the country. For more info on us, visit njbia.org. We release a new episode every other Friday, so be on the lookout. Shout out to New Jersey Manufacturers, manufacturers I can say that word, insurance. You should, they're our sponsor. <laughs> Shout out to them because they're our sponsor. They exactly. provide home, auto, and workers' comp insurance, and they're the official sponsor of the show. Check them out if you need insurance. That's awesome. So a couple housekeeping matters before we get started. Our show airs every other Friday or whenever you feel like listening to it on your podcast of choice, podcast app of choice, podcast network of choice, whatever you feel like watching it on. Sorry. Exactly. So iTunes, Google Play, Amazon's Echo. We can come out of your light bulbs, I guess, now because we're on there. Um, and, you know, <laughs> if you don't feel like getting into the whole podcast scene, we're on YouTube. So if you love us and you're listening to this on a service that provides like ratings and stuff, we'd love a five star review. It really help us get noticed and be discovered by more awesome listeners just like you. If you hate us, just go away. That's all. <laughs> No, but in all seriousness, we'd love to take your feedback. OPB at NJBIA.org is where you can go to do that. Exactly. Yeah. I like going away, though. Yeah, I mean, there's that, too. I mean, if you really hate us, just don't listen. Who listens you know? to this that hates yeah, us? Exactly. I mean, really. Yeah. That's dumb. So with us today is Republican leader John Brandnick. John, say hi. Let the audience hear your voice. Uh, here's my voice. What's the name of the show? Other People's Business? Other People's other Business. Other People's Business. So people are listening in on Other People's Business. Exactly. exactly. Like, mind and, your own business. And you're, and you're permitted to listen to Other People's Business. Right. You're permitted. All right. Yeah. Then I'm in. In fact, we would encourage it. We would encourage it. <laughs> <laughs> on your podcast network People are very choice. interested in Other People's Business. Yeah. It'd be probably better if they're interested in their own business. It probably. Yeah, but yeah. Well, we'll, st we'll settle for that. Today, we're going to hear all about yours. <laughs> uh, I'm ready, willing, and able to perform. And, uh, and what's the first question? We're excited. That, first question. It is, yeah. It's a tough one. Yeah. So if you were stuck on a deserted island, would you prefer to be there with your worst enemy or no one at all? And one of um, us could, why don't you go? I would yeah. say I would say my worst enemy. Really? Yeah. Why is that? Because most of the time you can find something in common with somebody else when you spend enough time. And on a desert island, I think being alone is very difficult and I think your worst enemy, whoever that is, uh, you probably work together because you're in survival mode. Uh, and as I said, I don't think even your worst enemy is that bad. I, I, I've heard people say, I don't like this person, I don't like that person. If you work hard enough and you listen carefully enough, you will find common ground. Wow. That's something you really want to hear out of your uh, legislators. That's exactly but it is, right. But it is true. My father used to say, if you look too closely at all your friends, you won't have any friends. Mm. Well, that's probably true, too. <laughs> I like that. Somebody I'm saying, it's a good question. Uh, let's put it this way. I'm probably not getting on a desert island for a couple probably. of years. First of all, I'm not doing any of those cruises. Mm, I was going to say, nobody deliberately winds up on a deserted island. I don't like though. cruises either, though. Well, I'm not going on a cruise no. that's out. And I'm not going into the ocean, you know, more than maybe up to my ankles, mm -hmm. right? Because I'm a Benny. Same. You know, I'm from North Jersey. So I'm not going to go too far into the ocean. <laughs> Same. Um, and the waves, you never know how the waves are going to hit I you. No. So I'm a little worried about that. And the sand's really hot. Mm. So I'm careful about that. So, um, so you don't fly anywhere? Oh, I fly. Now, so you're saying I could crash on a hey, desert exactly. island. Hey, exactly. Happened on Lost, happened in Castaway. That's like, right. But if I crash on a desert island, I figure I won't be the only survivor. No, let's so say for this hypothetical work. scenario. You are, though. Well, it's scenario. you or you and the worst enemy. Yeah. Well, if, so the, my worst enemy is on the plane. He's on the plane <laughs> or she's on the plane with right. you. Let's, that's that's right. And it was an crash. awkward flight. <laughs> okay. So if we crash, uh, I survived just with the worst enemy, and now we just build a life together. Right. Yeah. Forever. Have you have you know Gilligan's Island? I yes. Last night, yeah. Well, I'm not sure they all got along. You had the millionaire yep. or the billionaire guy, yeah. right? And you just had a skipper. Mm -hmm. So I can get along with pretty much anybody. Okay. All right. Fair yeah. enough. What about you? I then? was going to go with the same. I, at first, knee jerk reaction. I was going to say alone. Yeah. You know, because like. You know what, if I have to be there, and I have to be there with somebody else, why have the drama of being there with exactly. somebody you don't like? But then I, I thought about it, and I was like, yeah, but being by myself, you know, nobody to talk to. I was watching Orange is the New Black last season, and one of the characters got put in solitary for the entire season, and that was considered a bad thing. Yeah. And I was like, well, you know, if I was in jail, I probably wouldn't want to be, like, out getting beaten up and stuff like that every day. I, I don't know if that really happens in jail, but I mean, the context of the show sure yeah so i was like but maybe being by myself would actually be all right but no like it was really messing with him psychologically mm. you know it's or her psychologically basketball wilson i know best, you know as your best friend you're probably right yeah my new yeah, jersey well, you gotta also... draw a picture on a basketball 
<laughs> you lonely. Well, yeah, no, no kidding. Yeah, not great. Yeah, so then I was thinking it would probably be better to be with my worst enemy. And then, like you said, you know, maybe you, 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 every TV show ever has an episode where you take these two people that hate each other, handcuff them together in some way, and put them in a situation Is that they can't get out. a TV show like that? Every show every has an show episode. Has, yeah. yeah, like I, I was thinking about like Smallville, where like uh, Superman and Lex Luthor get like locked in a cave and yep. like they have to work it out. Like lost for with Kate and Juliet. Yes, literally every handcuffed show. together. Yeah, yeah every terrible. show has one, and yeah. I always point it out when I see it. I'm like, that's your episode where you handcuff two people together. You know, they should take the Republicans and Democrats, break them up to twosomes, and put that's a, a great Republican idea. Guy, handcuff them. Let them go live somewhere for a week, then come back like act like a human being. If only That's TV scriptwriters wrote New Jersey <laughs> legislature, you know? They should do that in Washington, as opposed to what these people do, yeah. is they yell at each other, and yeah. then they get on a plane, they go home. Mm. That's per This NJBIA solved the crisis. We figured it of, out. Of, Right here on other people's business. <laughs> no wonder everyone's turning to your, your other people's business. Other people's yeah. business. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> hey, we should whisper because not, not everyone should know about other people's business. Oh, I'm just everybody should know about other people's business. Everybody. Like, now you want to know. The next game is two truths and a lie. No, okay. close. Okay, close. Here we go. Oh, actually, before we get to any more fun stuff, though. Yeah. Or, or wait, wait, but you didn't get to you go. Didn't. I'm sorry. Oh no. yeah. So my knee jerk was uh, a load, but then the more I thought about like logistics, you know, like building shelter and making mm. fire and two people would be better than than one person so i guess i guess worst enemy but i'm not happy about it yeah i remember when um tom hanks was like trying to build something on top of this mountain thing and so, so they didn't well, let's go back to the worst enemy yeah. what is it about somebody else's personality that just is offensive to you like let's talk about your worst think about your worst wow, enemy why I, do you hate your worst enemy I think it depends on the person, but probably it But generally depends. speaking, take somebody you define now as your new worst enemy. What is it about that person that turn him, in, him or her into your worst probably enemy? Probably their behavior toward me. Like they've done or said mm -hmm. something hurtful or mean or terrible. And you, you know, the funny thing is, like, I, can't, I, I don't think I have a worst enemy. Now, <laughs> okay, yeah, I don't have a worst enemy. No, no, that's not the thing. I don't think See, I do it's, a, it's my hypothetical. Right, uh -huh. sure. you got to create Oh, so I'm creating enemy. a person. Yeah. Okay. Oh. So... Yeah, I mean, it would be like somebody that just repeatedly was getting into my life and trying to mess it up. Yeah. So my daughter is my worst, <laughs> worst enemy. There we go. I How love her to death. She? She's 14 months. Yeah. Oh, four, yeah. And she's 14 adorable. Months. 14 months. She's months. already my nemesis. That makes sense. <laughs> so I, I will answer my own question. Okay. All right. People who are so egotistical yeah. that all they do is talk about themselves. Yep. That is as annoying as it gets. How great they are. So on a desert island, I suspect they'll run out of thinking they're great because they're hungry oh, yeah. you know, and things aren't That's going well. Point. But it's that ego that they got to talk about themselves constantly yeah. mm. as opposed to thinking about the other person. That's a really good point. Plus, there's skills that I just don't have. So, you know, hopefully the other person, you know, can pick up the slack or I, you know. I've watched those survivor shows. Yeah. I mean, I, I got to tell you, I probably should be certified based on all the shows I've watched. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, I think that was the no. So that, yeah, right? I'm up next. Yeah, so you. our next question is: Tell us about what you do. Yeah. What do you do? Oh, you mean the legislature? Yeah. Either way. So you yeah. own a business, right? And yeah. you're also in the legislature. Yeah. So you. So I, I started. Tell us about both. Yeah. yeah. I started as a lawyer in uh, the city of New York, and mm -hmm. then in '84, I opened my law firm, just me, and I rented a space, and now I have 50 employees and 23 wow. lawyers, wow. and that's from 1984 to 2018. And basically, I'm a trial lawyer, and we do anything that involves trials. It could be personal injury, criminal, it could be litigation. We don't do any transaction. We don't do any closings. We don't represent corporations in business. We just basically are in, probably 12 of our 23 lawyers are in court every day somewhere. Wow. wow. And my second job is as an assembly person. I serve as the Republican leader in the House. So basically, uh, we make laws. That's what we do. And my third job is I do stand-up comedy for charity. Oh, very cool. I've been cool. doing that since I won the Funniest Lawyer in New, New York, New Jersey contest in 1986. Is that a high bar? No. Yeah, it's, I was going to say. Actually, it's, a, it's, it's a little tougher than the Funniest Accountant. Okay. Because those guys are a riot. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, that, that's a barrel of laughs in accounting firms. <laughs> well, that's really cool. Yeah, it so is really cool. I do cool. three things, and uh, it's because sometimes I feel as if, you know, if, you, if you're upset with politics, Go to law office. If you're upset mm -hmm. with law office, go do comedy. But by mixing it up, nothing gets stale and everything still is exciting and fun. 
Secrets of Life. That's awesome. Yeah, yeah you got to mix it up. I agree. I'll tell you, somebody told me once that you're famous for compromising, that you're famous for being the guy who really just wants to work it out. You know, there, there shouldn't be a winner. We should, like, all get a little something. Because it's not about me. Right. No, I love people come down there, and it's all about them. You just represent the people. My wife's going to tell me that. You're not ro- She saw my license plate with the two gold seals. She goes, you're not royalty. You <laughs> just represent people. So if you think about this, we're having these discussions. Mm-hmm. It should never involve me. I got nothing to do with this. I'm representing 200,000 people or people. We're representing 8.5 million people. Why would it be about your ego? Yeah. You can't take it. Per- it's not personal. Yeah. And there is a lot of that personal fighting and infighting that you see, which I'm going like this. That's disrespectful to who you represent. Yeah, and it's just hard to get things done, I imagine. I mean, if you talk about my, if you, I mean, if you attack my kids or my wife, I'll take that personally, but it hasn't happened. <laughs> They've attacked every one of my That's bills. grounds for becoming the new worst enemy. <laughs> yeah, well, you know, I mean, if, if somebody comes after my family, but no one does that. Yeah. That's good. Yet. Yes. <laughs> well, I have, they have to get a little closer to me in the polls, right? Mm. Then they'll go after my whole family. Yeah, you're probably right. Yeah. All right. Very cool. I think we're going to take a break. Sure. And we'll be back, and then we're going to play a game called Awful or Awesome. Awesome. Break. We're, gonna take a break. we're taking a break. Well, because it's the format of the show. Yeah. Oh, yeah. okay, good. <laughs> that was the first half. We're going to take a break, and then there'll be a second half. Okay, good. All right, we're back, and we're going to play a game called Awful or Awesome. I'm going to name three things in quick succession, and then we awful each... Awful or awesome? Awful oh, or, good or awesome. Bad. Okay. Awful or right. awesome. Right. <laughs> good or bad. Exactly. Okay. And uh, we each have to decide if it's awful or awesome and be prepared to defend your answers. Ready? Ready. Go. Black Friday shopping. Awful. Yeah. Awful. I guess I'm going to go with, like, awesome-ish. How? Why? Well, all right. So I guess I'm, I'm going first. You have to defend I'm your answer. Yeah, all right. So... In the okay, so I never went like real Black Friday shopping. Like I've never gotten up at like three o'clock in the morning and driven to Walmart okay. or something. But like in the era of online, yeah, I guess the problem with Black Friday shopping is that I get up and there's these deals on all these things that I want, and so I immediately start buying for myself. And then somewhere around noon, it starts to occur to me that I got to buy stuff for other people. <laughs> and by then, I've already like tripled my budget for you know <laughs> Christmas shopping or holiday shopping, whatever. So that is awful, you know, like wow, yeah, I'm selfish. I know, I am. I'm very selfish. So really, so that's a problem. But like, just the idea that like you know things are on sale is. is got to be a good thing, right? Yeah. And it, it does a lot for our economy, so that's got to yeah. be Yeah. We actually thought that you were going to say awesome because it's good for the economy. The reason it's awful is because it's turned out to be a mess. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, people line up. Yep. You, you, you kind of see almost violence in certain situations. Yeah. And what yep. I don't like is here are the retailers. You know, you got a certain number of TVs for like $1.59, mm. right? And now you put these people out there, you make them camp out yeah. and get in front of a glass door to run in to get the TV. Like, just give everybody the TV. It's like Survivor. It's like that it's TV like, show. You know, like, I, I just, it's almost like lining the people up and treating them like cattle. Yeah. I, I don't, I, one of the things I don't like is when you disrespect people. Yeah. And it's, it's to the point where you know, we have 27 TVs, and the first 27 people come in, get it. The rest of you are losers. You're out. <laughs> wow. and you camped yeah. out all night, and now you're outside in the cold. And then people get violent. You know, I was 28th in line. It's just... Yeah. And the fact that they're starting to, to bring it into Thanksgiving now, like yeah. some of them... I, I don't those... want, I really don't Although there was mind. a lot of pushback to that. You know, like the places that were opening up on Thanksgiving, I remember there were a lot of like That's boycotts good. and people were saying like, don't shop there. It's terrible. And then they stopped doing it. But not everybody, I guess. Yeah. So. It gets people nuts. Yeah, yeah. I agree. You know, you know I just... It's just, it, it, I think it used to be kind of cool. Now it's out of control. Yeah. I guess I had forgotten about all that since, you know, I just wake up and do it on the web, the computer. But right. Yeah. Well, if you're doing it on a computer, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. But I don't think I of Black Friday as a computer. They call no, that that's Cyber Monday. Monday. Cyber Monday. Well, yeah, there's Small Business Saturday, yeah. Cyber Monday, and Black Friday. <laughs> and drinking, not in that order, drinking sorry. Drinking Tuesday. Right? Yeah. Drinking Tuesday. Drinks, yeah. Dessert Sunday. That's when you uh, <laughs> drink about how much you spent on yourself. <laughs> Did you say drink about how yeah, much you spent? Yeah, because he said it was drinking yeah. Tuesday. I like that. I like that. <laughs> All right, next one is stand-up comedy. Oh, stand-up awesome. comedy is awesome. Awesome. We were just talking yesterday well, about... Who uh, would say awful? 
I, I agree. One one comedian could be awful. Yeah. Right. But your laughter is unbelievable. We were you're, just, you're at, it's an out-of-body experience. <laughs> I agree. I agree. We were just talking yesterday about um, back in the 90s, Eddie Murphy Raw, getting like the VHS cassette, you know, and watching it before we were even 20 years old and, you know, you're laughing. Right? So I'm opening for Joe Piscopo tonight. Are you really? That, that, that is amazing. Uh, so the entire concept of creative comedy where you are in a zone listening to that and laughing is really just and you've heard people they never stop laughing they cry they almost mm -hmm, cried mm -hmm. you know they couldn't get the smile off their face what what could be better in our environment when there's so much hate hmm. anger yeah um, frustration difference, you know angst. extreme extremism yeah that, that's a problem for me so it's a real it's a real relief to me to, to do comedy and watch people laugh that's awesome do we'll either of you have like favorite stand-up comedians? George Carlin. George Carlin. Oh, okay, yeah. And George you know what Carlin. his basis is, really? He's mad. Yeah. He's, got, he's mad mm -hmm. about everything. Uh huh. So I read his book, and his brother was completely had real kinds of problems. Had psychiatrists. He was on drugs. He had all kinds of problems. This is in George Carlin's book, and George Carlin probably said, "There's nothing wrong with you. The world's a mess." And from that point on, he did really well. Mm. Huh. That's amazing. But George Carlin, if you look at everything he says, he's angry but he does it in such a way that he doesn't sound like he have a chip on his shoulder no. he's mad but it's not a chip mm -hmm. if you get up there and you have a chip the audience feels it that's mm. right yeah i would agree i think george, i hadn't thought about george carlin and uh, i'm God, writing a new routine on simon says are you because you got to think about something that everybody in the audience knows yeah young people old people everyone played simon says so you take this game and you can turn that into a bit because now everyone's paying attention. Yeah. You played Simon Says, right? Hmm? And tonight I'm going to use it. I, it was just, Simon, put your hands up, put your hands down, right? Now, can you imagine the ego this guy Simon had? <laughs> you bring him a cup of coffee, he goes like this, did you hear Simon? <laughs> did I mention my name? I won't tell you it ended a joke, but, but there's, a, there's a comedian, Mike Marino, I gave it to, and he goes like this, I used to have Uncle Vinny. Uncle Vinny says, and you better do it. <laughs> I want to add it, what my mom said, you did it, you got boom. Uh-huh, uh-huh, absolutely. But I need some help on that joke if you get a chance. Oh, right, yeah, well. What's the rest of the Simon Says joke? All right. Okay, and how well. about pin the tail on a donkey? Can you think about that? They spin the kid around three times on a blindfold. Uh-huh. And then you got to find a certain part of the donkey. I know, hmm. right? I don't know. Doesn't seem politically correct no. to me. <laughs> Not at all. He's walking around in circles. All right, I just had a Simon Says okay. idea. So I guess this is like a little bit of physical comedy. You could get everybody in the audience to like stand up, put their hand on their nose, balance themselves on one foot or whatever, and after getting them to do all this ridiculous stuff, you'd just be like, I didn't say Simon Says. Yeah. <laughs> Come on! You know? That's pretty good. I know, that's what I'm here for. That's why that. we have our own show. That's really good. <laughs> it's comedy gold right yeah. here. Simon so Says everyone has to turn on other people's business every week. Nice! I love it! I like Maybe it. You hypnotize the audience. Huh? Really? I'll play one of okay. those things like this. Listen to my voice. <laughs> listen closely. From now on, I have a post hypnotic suggestion. You're going to listen to Michelle Sakurka and everybody at NJBIA about the business. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, that worked. Excellent. How about you? Favorite stand up comedian? Um, you know, I was going to say Eddie Murphy, but. I used to listen to the George Carlin CD because it was, you know, not a record anymore. I bought the CD over and over and over again. Mm. I think it's Carlin. Yeah, I forgot about him. I love him. Hmm. Yeah. Seinfeld's very good too because yeah, he he's clean as well. Yes. He and I study all those people to try to understand how they. And what's interesting, the first thing I learned, you have to get the the audience to like you. Sure. Because you need them on your team. Mm -hmm. And if you go in there and say something that they don't like you at the beginning, they'll turn you right off. Mm -hmm. So I always go out and I go, look, this John Bramley, funniest lawyer in New Jersey. I got some bad news for you, and I got some good news for you. The bad news is that you paid money to hear a lawyer tell a joke. <laughs> the good news is I'm not getting paid either, so none of your money's coming. I was going to say the good news would be that they didn't pay to hear an accountant tell a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know, you're with me. I'm glad I'm I'll, I'll sit there with you. We'll hash it out. We'll write a whole thing. <laughs> great. I know. I know. Do you watch Mrs. Maisel? It's this thing about stand up. Uh, oh, yeah. It's a really yeah. good show. Yeah. I have, everyone tells me, but I just haven't been home in uh, uh, 365 days. When oh, you get life. to it, you'll like it. I'm going to watch it. Yeah, because it's all about how she goes from being a housewife to a stand up, and she has to learn how to how to land a joke in the beats and, and getting that's, the audience on great. your side. It's awesome. The good news is, and you don't have the funniest accountant. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I just genius. got my opening line. Going, nah. 
That's even better. Oh. Fabulous. All right, let's Please. keep going. I need all more right. material. All right. Do you have a favorite stand-up? I really love um, Kathleen Madigan. I don't know if you've heard of her. She has her own stand-up on uh, Netflix. It's hilarious. Um, and John Caparulo, he's another one. But let's say Kathleen Madigan, just because All right. we haven't done a female comic. Good you know, call. Us, Good but, yeah. call. Yeah, she's hilarious. All right. Yeah. Very cool. I've never heard of her, so I have oh, to Oh, yeah. Check her she's, out. Um, she tries to play herself off as like this typical Irish woman, you know, with like an Irish family and all this. It's, it's hilarious. I know? got another question Irish for you. Sure. Can we go off script? Yeah, yeah. go okay, for it. So I mean, there, we have the script just so we don't forget to tell okay, people to so like, <laughs> tune in on iTunes. <laughs> It's not really for like the joke. I'm going to make a suggestion <laughs> for you people out there have dinner parties. So I had a dinner yeah. party last Saturday night. I do it. We do it every few months. We have a table question. Oh. And the reason I have a table question is it doesn't break up into small conversations about, you know, do you like Trader Joe's? Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Everybody likes NJM, but I'm talking about Trader No, so you ask a question. Sponsored by NJM Insurance. That's right. <laughs> exactly. If you have an accident, <laughs> they're going to pay. Mm. Uh, so you go around the table and... Everyone has a turn. So, so our question, my first question was, you're in a van going across country for five days. Pick anybody other than your family, friends, or anyone at this table to be in the van. Anyone from history, dead or alive, wow. et cetera. And I've done this with everybody. I've done it with Governor Christie. I've done it with all the attorney generals. Mm -hmm. from, with everybody. And you ask people who you want in the van, and you go around the table, it's absolutely fabulous. Hmm. All right, and who would you like in the van? Now, remember, oh you're God. in five days in a van cr crossing Just with one other person? No, no. Three people in the three van people? and you. Yeah. Anybody from history, dead or alive, or alive today? I don't. Oh, my God. Somebody who's going to be entertaining. Mm. George Carlin. <laughs> <laughs> He'll be fun. Oh, dead or alive? Dead Not or just alive. dead or alive. Okay. Yeah. Mm. He's kind of cranky, though. Huh. But that's okay. He'd be funny. Mm. Um, Philip Roth. Wow, that's pretty good. A Newark native? A Newark native. Oh, yeah. Newark, so yeah. Do you know yeah. Philip Roth? I do, of course. I Went to Week Wake High School, I think. He did? Yeah. He did. Yeah. That's too funny. You know a lot of older people for yes, somebody who's young. Well, I'm not that young. <laughs> um, God. Well, anyway. You yeah, know I, mean? I can't. I can't. But, but, the, but you have table questions, and uh, sometimes we're talking about, but never have a dinner party if you haven't prepared the conversation as hard as you prepared the food. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good call. Hmm. And it's been, we had one the other night and went, what name would you like to have other than your name? Oh, mm. that's a good one. Mm. What'd you, what did you pick? Like, you know, I, I said like Chip Reed. <laughs> you know, like, oh, first and last, not just first well, like, You got to come up with a last You know, name. like, you know, <laughs> Baba Booey. You know, like well, people it's... pick crazy names. <sighs> yeah. I jokingly, we were at a, um, a thing downstairs once. It was a staff thing. And I said to somebody... Uh, Anastasia Morningside. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> like all the time in my head, I was like, "Hey, Anastasia, Anastasia Morningside, how are you?" That's, <laughs> Isn't that's, that good? It, that's fabulous. Yeah, huh? sounds like mm -hmm. a soap opera. I'd love it to be something like really um, recognizable. So right. that, you know, like maybe I, I go up Senator and be like, Rockefeller. Yeah, like, I was just thinking like <laughs> Jimi Hendrix. Rocky. And then people well, will be like, about "What?" Change your name to Senator Rockefeller. You get a reservation anywhere. <laughs> Hello, uh, who's calling? I'm calling for Senator Rockefeller. He'd like to have a reservation. Oh, I hadn't even dinner. thought about that. Yeah, that's right. No, that's right. Um, uh, House of Security in there mm -hmm. before we bring a senator in. <laughs> <laughs> I go around calling myself Tom Cruise. People will be like, no. <laughs> he doesn't bad, get a table. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Bullwinkle the Moose. Exactly. <laughs> All right. Last one. Skydiving. I'm out. Awesome. Yeah, awful. I'm not. I'm the Can't. Best. You're not going to do it? No. Wow. I like to be alive. I, it's really not that bad. So this is how I how I talked myself into it or how I justified it when I did it. It's kind of like a roller coaster. You know, they do the roller coaster 2,000 times a day. People get on, people get off. They do it at Disney World where nobody gets hurt. It's the same thing with the skydiving. Like, they strap me to this guy who does this 80, 90 times a day. It's his job. So, like, I figure, like, statistically, what are the chances something's going to go wrong here? This is what this guy does. It's like, it's like if you were to come in here and, you know, sit down and do other people's business, Kate and I do this all the time. So, like, what are the chances that anybody's going to get hurt here, you know? Like, <laughs> <laughs> well, we're not, you know, falling out of an airplane for starters, right. so now, the chances are, are much better that nobody's going to get hurt. Probably. Right. But you could trip on that wire right there, you know? It could happen, oh but God. it doesn't, because statistically, we do this all the time. We've ironed out these problems. It's just a false comparison is the problem. I'm sorry. I, I don't know. So that was how I talked myself into it, at right. least. And when you're doing it, it's really not that bad. Like, the, the worst part of it is when you're on the airplane and they, they bring you up to the door and you look over and see how high up you really are. That moment, um, maybe I'll, I don't know. I have a video 
of like when I did this, and I don't remember this. Like I don't remember it happening. But you can very you clearly see me. Yeah, you can very clearly see <laughs> me oh, mouth God, the please. f word like as I'm looking over the edge. But I don't remember it happening. But once you, you go over, you can even say the f word on an NJBIA television kind of station. I didn't though. I know. You, 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 you we'll bleep it out. Better. We'll bleep it out. I'm, unbelievable. I had no idea that the NJBIA was this, this much fun. This is. I thought. <laughs> I thought you guys stood around and go like this. Geez, what does this cost? Mm, what are the business? That would not make for a very good right. podcast. Now, Some people it? here yeah. do that, but we don't. Yeah. Wow, I can't believe this is fabulous. I know, N right? You should have an NJBIA F for fun. <laughs> <laughs> the subdivision of the NJBIA. Oh. Hi, tune into NJBIA F. Oh the fun goodness. part of NJBIA. <laughs> so you would not go skydiving. As you said, it's not that bad. No, so here, I have. You, I got a simple yeah. theory here. I got a lot of options. Jumping out of the plane? No. Probably not number one on my list. No. Miniature. How about miniature golf? Sounds all right to me. Yeah. How, there's a million things I can do. Why I jump out of a plane? Sounds of Trenton. Yeah, yeah, sounds of Trenton. Sorry. If you're uh, watching this in your car, you're not being pulled over. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'd rather go fishing and drink beer. Yeah. I'd rather sit on a rather beach play somewhere with a book. Play golf, yeah. Jump, jump out of a plane? Uh -uh. Yeah. I will tell you, aside from looking over the, the edge of the thing, the worst part about it is after the free fall. So they, they release the parachute, and you're going down for five minutes, and it feels like ten hours. Five minutes? Yeah, you got to very slowly make your way down. It, it might have even been ten minutes. It felt like ten hours. Oh, my God. The problem is you are falling at you know a very fast velocity, and your parachute is pulling you up at let's say an equally fast you know thing and all of that is happening like right in your lower area and it's just pulling up as hard as it can and that was not comfortable that sounds awful I think, like I, was right. hours. I think you're right but hey that, we are right. that free yeah. fall is awesome you know when you're going down i guess it's like hmm. 10 seconds you never get, thought like, about the pressure on the lower area I'm yeah. you what, <laughs> hey i'm telling you i'm, I'm you giving you the uh, warning if you're out there you're, thinking again, about you're watching diving. njbia this is not for people below the age of 18. yeah we did actually have to raise our uh rating we yeah. were um rated g or PG. yes we were g and, and then we had to go up to like pg or pg-13 pg-13 because we had an hr attorney talk about some things that she's had to go to court over. i like how you're <laughs> censoring yourself even though we totally talked about it on the show <laughs> well, <laughs> pres president bush for his 80th birthday uh, uh, bush one jumped out of the plane did he really that was his birthday president at 80. that's oh. and if he can do it at 80 anybody can do it at any age they are i can't yeah. believe his doctor allowed that, that yeah just i can't like, believe that either actually i don't like, think he asked the doctor how would he not have a heart attack on the way down? When George Burns was 100, he was smoking a cigar doing yeah. comedy, and somebody says, what does your doctor say? He said, my doctor died 10 years ago. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, what I'm thinking about is how like logistically crazy it would be to have George Bush fly, jump out of the plane, and, the and then the Secret Service, service guy would have to jump out with him. The Secret <laughs> Service guy ain't gone. No. Yeah, exactly. I wouldn't I'll know. take a bullet for him, but I ain't jumping out of a plane. <laughs> oh, my God. Hmm. I wouldn't either. Huh? All right. All right, so that's our, I that's, think that's our that's show. That's the whole show? Yeah, that's, that's our it. game. Yeah, yeah, That's the game. So, actually, before you get into the whole, like, that's whatever. the game means that's the show? Well, not no, really. So, we have one more thing. We have one so, more thing before the show's over. Yeah, you know, like, if it's you have like anything. It's like Jeopardy. Dun, yeah. Dun, dun, yeah, right. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> I was going to let that go because, you know, we haven't just got tried for a copyright strike on this show. And <laughs> I'm actually song. writing a book. Oh, that's not true. Last episode, we sung uh, If Wait, I Could Turn Back that's Time. That's right, right? Sure. Yeah. We yeah. Totally And did. we did really good at we that. Did. So, yeah. We did a really I'm good job. I'm fully expecting to get flagged by YouTube. <laughs> Um, no, I was going to ask if you have anything coming up that you want to promote. I think this is going to air around Black Friday because yeah, we had the Black Friday question. So if there's anything coming up you want to promote, otherwise, like, you know. Early December, anything coming up? No, but if they want to see the comedy, they can go to funniestlawyerinnewjersey.com. Is that NJ or New Jersey spelled out? Spelled out. Okay. If you want to see what I'm doing in the legislature, you can go to votebramnick.com. Okay. Or go to my Facebook. And if you want to go to my law practice, just go to johnbramnick.com. Cool. Very nice. Excellent. Right. And if you don't want to do any of that, just stay with NJBI. But I want to tell you, this NJM Insurance Company, mm -hmm. I got to tell Sponsor you. Sponsor of our show. Organized, a professional, mm -hmm. um, sincere, well-run uh, operation of any business I've ever seen. And I've been dealing with them for a long time, wow. sometimes as their adversary. Mm -hmm. And you still like them? I like them because what they do is they make smart decisions. They're tough when they have to be. And they're fair in other times. And I, as I said, I've been across the table with them for 30 years. 
Wow. Wow. That's they're really good. They're really well organized. And NJM didn't even ask us to say no. No, they're really well organized. And I've said that to the president and other members. So and I think they do a good job in the community as well, helping sponsor uh, here do. and other some public television. They do a good job. They do. Mm. They're great corporate neighbors. Yeah. Greets. Yeah. So if, you're, if you have to crash your car. Well, yeah. <laughs> I think I was talking about that on the last episode too. I've done that way too many times, and they've they've been really cool about it. They haven't raised my rates yet, so yeah. Knock on wood, right? Knock on wood. <laughs> All right. Thank you to subscribers and listeners. We appreciate the support. Another thank you to New Jersey manufacturers. Uh, we, <laughs> I'd, I'd go to an island with you two. You seem uh, like fun. We I, are fun. I mean, you think about it. The three of us on a desert island. That'd be fun. Not a bad idea. And you no. said you like fishing, right? Because I can't oh, do that. Sign the fishing. That's your, yeah. I'm going to say, you that's know, your sign. I know why charge. you came up with this, because you're <laughs> jumping out of planes. That's how you're going to end up at a desert that's island. That's exactly right. I'm not going to be in a desert island. <laughs> <laughs> it could happen. You never know. I could build a fire if you give me charcoal and a lighter. Or a match, yeah. yeah. God, I don't think any of those exist on a desert island, now. I think it's like rubbing two sticks Well, I mean, if we have the contents of the plane, somebody might have brought something, you know? I could die for mm. lobsters if they're not too far down. Yeah, that's something. Yeah. I just don't want to run into a shark. No. Not too good. Me and sharks, I ain't too good. No. I'm good with the shark. No, I am not. It's no bueno. I can't do no, that. No, no the shark. Lobsters that. would have to be difficult to cook on the island, though. You know, you don't have the pot. Um, yeah. Eat them live, man. What? I'm oh, sure, of course. Not live. Eat them live? Cats, Wait. Sushi. You don't eat sushi? No, I don't eat sushi. Are you kidding? Actually, but you don't shellfish. eat sushi live either, right? You like, know, selfish. Sushi's selfish. not live. No, fish, you're right. right. No, it's, it's raw. raw. Yeah. I'm not sure shellfish is something you can eat as sushi, actually. I think you're right. I think yeah, it has to be to cooked. Cook that. Yeah. yeah. Well, we could we could go down and dive, get fish. We're giving right? a warning out to all of our listeners. Don't eat raw products. <laughs> no, no. Yeah, yeah exactly. Uh, don't do any of this at home because yeah. we have no idea. What exactly. We have no way. idea. What we're talking. we're going to die on this deserted <laughs> island like three days Wait, in. Me, you grab the lobster in that claw. that has got the claw. Yeah. Not the crawl. The right. claw. Yeah. yeah. And they, it grabs your hand. Uh-huh. Right? But then you can, but it's worth it. Why do you want to get bit by a lot? This is me jumping out of a plane. You want to get bit by a lobster? Because I'm hungry, man. <laughs> <All right. sighs> I can't. I'm going to start with the coconuts. You, you guys can go after the lobster. This is some beautiful centerpiece. You guys really spend a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> you tell Michelle Sakurka she went way at, what was it, somebody's wow. That was at the died? Women Business Leaders Forum in 2018. Yeah. I feel like the and shame is the just... the Cedarbrook School goldfish <laughs> that died and you got the beach. There was a whole thing about it. Do you remember it was like the empowering, yes, you were pearls, walking on the beach, you were pearls you were you were going to be the wisdom. oyster and the pearl was going to i don't remember i feel I bad now either. but like i know it's after good. the women business leaders forum they gave let everybody me see on who won the centerpiece let me just see oh look you, i did because it's, it's been on my desk you take that home so you know so i need something for i need something for matt valentine's day i'm gonna take that back here. sounds <laughs> see he's making fun of it but he really wants no one. Yeah. i remember i give my wife a valentine's present there's two reactions like oh Where'd you get that? Mm. That's Ooh. a bad one. As opposed to, oh, I love it. Yeah. There's no middle ground there. Wow. This is an I love She doesn't even it. fake it by no, saying, goes, oh, oh, this is great. No, where'd you get I, it? How about this? Oh, where's the receipt? Oh, no, I'm okay. She's going, mm. oh, oh, oh. Where'd you get no, but that, it? No, I'm, I'm pretty good. I'm, sometimes I get good stuff. That's good. Yeah. What's the last really good thing you got her? I got her this Eskimo sculpture because, you know, she's an artist. Oh, okay. And it's... I don't think it's cut out of any of those endangered species. Okay. But, you know, it's made by some... Well, Eskimos are people, right? Yeah, but I think... Oh, you cut, carved out of... Eskimos. <laughs> Sorry. It wasn't an Eskimo person. Yes. <laughs> right. No, that's, that's definitely illegal. Um, so, yeah. so, uh, so that was... She liked that. And she likes anything that looks... Old, like, you go in a store and it's not for sale. Like, <laughs> right. some piece of furniture right. that's about to... Something that's shabby off chic, the, yeah, but really shabby. Right. Like if we drive by a like a, somebody's something out in the street, like an old chair, she goes, "Oh my god, it's fabulous." Mm. I go, "I'm not stopping that. I'm picking up something in the street." <laughs> there goes the Republican leader stealing stuff on the street again. I <laughs> imagine you guys at Shoprite, and she's calling the people over. How much for this? And they're like, "Well, the bread is two ninety. No, 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 the shelving. <laughs> I need this for the that's bedroom." Exactly, that's exactly right. Huh. She bought the furniture that Ralph Lauren was going to throw out on the floor of the Ralph Lauren store at Short Hills Mall. Oh my wow. God! She went in like this. What's going on with these? We're getting rid of it. She goes, "I'll take it." <laughs> Well, this is the old stuff. That's what I want. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah, Google Pat Brentano and you'll see. All right. Okay. Yeah. Very cool. So can we go another hour or not? Hey, we can go as long as you it's want. Your, it's your clock. So you don't ever have time for, like, watching TV, huh? You know something? I basically watch the news, 
Yeah. But I'm out probably uh, almost every night, at least two or three events. I believe that. On the weekends mm -hmm. as well. So I would say, um, I, watch, I basically watch, the, I watch CNN, Fox, and MSNBC. That's a good mix. Yeah. Those, I watch them all. And yeah. people say, I only watch one. No, you no. can't just watch one. But, for, but there are people You got to get both sides No, they the, go uh, like this. I never watch MSNBC. I never, I went like this. Well, how would you know what the other side thought? That's mm -hmm. right. That's what gets me nuts about people. You will only listen to one side because they disagree with you? Right. Mm. So what else? That's all I do, and let's see. I do, uh, let's see. I practice to be on a desert island sometimes. Like I just go in the backyard for an hour and pretend I'm in the just, desert but island. But you refuse to do anything Quiet, that would get you like there. The silence <laughs> in the backyard, just being no, alone? No, I go and I forage. Oh, you forage? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, this is a tennis ball that I've had out on my lawn for like eight years now. Hey. Right. Oh. Sure that looks like use. a three-leaf clover. I wonder if I can eat that. No, mm. right? There's a garden gnome over there. Exactly. <laughs> Actually, my wife told me we have poison ivy growing in our, um, I think, our front lawn. Oh. And I looked, and I had no idea what what I was looking for, and I guess that's the problem, you yeah. know. Like, yeah, that's well, how I, I, got I it. guess yeah. you didn't get to the Eagle Scout. Bag. I guess not. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> I was gonna say, I was a Cub Scout for a long time, and I joined yeah, the Boy yeah. Scouts, but you I guess I don't remember. Right? I know leaves of three, but yeah. every leaf seemed to have three leaves yeah. on it, you know, or, you or like right three prongs. He left right before the outside uh, yeah. course. Right? Yeah, no, I'm not an outdoors person, so I, I guess I had to bail out before. I was that. gardening. Well, but you're off the island. Yeah. He's Seriously, out. No, I know you can't. I'm not taking you. Hey, but if we need Wi-Fi on the island, I'm. A tech guy. That's exactly right. You can cobble that together. Yeah. I got poison ivy three years ago, two years ago, and it was the worst experience of my life. Yeah, really I've, I, I will, I can't even tell you how horrible that it was. I can it, imagine. It for like get three, the four weeks. Right away. Yes. Well, they misdiagnosed it at first because I went to one of those Doc in the Box uh, yeah. MD Express doc things. Doc in the Box? What's doc a Doc in the Box? In the box? No, drive, no, doc in the Box. In. It's like drive through. Drive -through There's a drive through doc. doctor? No, 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 no. Sort of. No. You know, it's, it's like emergency room satellite emergency. Exactly. Room. Oh, okay. Well, that yeah. sounds pretty legit. Why would that be a bad thing? Well, I don't know who they've got working there, but it was like a clown car because they did not. <laughs> <laughs> they couldn't diagnose. Like, I'm, I'm like these big, horrible red rashes and they itch. What could that I possibly make, be? Just that you got a skin problem, go to dermatologist. Yeah, well, I didn't have the time to make an appointment for my dermatologist. Mm -hmm. I just wanted, you know, a quick eight o'clock in the morning appointment before work. And mm -hmm. yeah, because you're time, miserable and in pain. And right, exactly. And I just wanted that. to fix. So yeah. they misdiagnosed it, and then finally I got to my actual doctor a week later, maybe maybe less than that, and they gave me prednisone, a steroid. Yeah, that's what you need. It made me crazy though. Like I couldn't, my brain crazier couldn't. than you are now. Right, exactly. Which is really <laughs> terrifying. I'll take some of that. Oh my I god! I'll take uh, one liter of prednisone. <laughs> liter. <before. laughs> <laughs> it was the worst. It was the worst three weeks of my life. Wow. I swear to God. Wow, that's terrible. I never want to do you that. You came again. to work every day. I took a week off. I think with poison ivy. Yeah, with yeah. poison ivy because mm -hmm. I couldn't sit still and it was contagious. So if I accidentally uh, shook somebody's hand. Ooh. How do you accidentally eyes. shake somebody's hand? Sorry, if I shake somebody's hand, fall on top. Oh, sorry. <laughs> if I had shaken somebody's hand while I was contagious, it could have gotten on their yeah. arm or their shirt Ooh. or mm, yeah, it was awful. Terrible. Yeah, I never want to do that again. Well, I had a good time. Oh, thank you. All right. Well, thank you for coming. It was great being here. <laughs> we appreciate that. It was that. great having you. <laughs> yeah. All right, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye.